Hey guys, what's up? We are that horror couple. I'm Kayla Kaylin Har and I'm Robbie Rob James. And today we are here to talk about the awesome 80s slasher, which is The Mutilator. AKA Fall Break. That's right. By Sword. By Pick. By X. By Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Oh yeah. Talk about horror. Like and subscribe. <laughs> the Mutilator was released in 1984 and was directed by uh, Buddy Cooper. Yes, and the Mutilator, um, it was released in 84, but it was actually filmed a couple years previously. So it has like the early 80s like look to it, mm -hmm. or like late 70s, early 80s look. It wasn't released till 84. And uh, the plot of the Mutilator is actually a kid when he's young, he. Uh, He's cleaning his dad's guns for his birthday to surprise his dad. And he's mm -hmm. like, and he, he, for some reason, well, while he's cleaning the guns, actually points the gun at us, at, at the wall, shoots through the wall and kills his mother. Mm -hmm. And that scene actually starts out with a nice cake. So you think everything's going to go good. You're like, what can go wrong? And I have nice cakes here. And then the mother gets shot. And ah, he should have just got a Hallmark card. Yeah. <laughs> Cleaning the guns. I never heard of that yeah, for a gift. Yeah, he had a note left on the gun. He's like, hey, Dad, happy birthday. I cleaned all your guns. Dad, I cleaned your guns because I did not save enough of my allowance to buy you a good <laughs> gift. And I killed your wife. <laughs> and after the, the little kid, Ed, accidentally kills his mother, his dad comes home, finds the body there, totally bitch slaps the kid. He's mm -hmm. like, damn it, son. <laughs> and uh, he's like, you killed my wife on my birthday. He, I think he actually points the gun at him, too. Yeah, he doesn't pull the trigger, though. No. Mm -mm. And, and uh, yeah, so he freaks the kid out, and then he ha he gets a bottle of Jack Daniels, and he... He, he like, lays the, 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 the dead... His dead wife's body, like, on his legs, and, like, when he's drinking his drink, he, like, offers it to her, too. It's very strange. And that's the intro. Mm-hmm. Then it cuts to a few, to like about 15 years later, I guess, mm -hmm. and you see like a group of young adults at a bar, and you see like this like older guy, and we're, you know, we, we believe that's that's uh, Ed growing up, mm -hmm. and uh, he actually gets a call at the bar. Yeah, how did they know he was there? I, I find that funny too. He he gets a call at the bar because I guess if you're not home, it's like oh, if Ed ain't home, he's at the bar, that drunk. <laughs> so Ed gets a call at the bar. What did he get a call that, that, uh... His, his dad needed him to come to the beach house? Yeah, his, uh, his dad, his dad... To clean out the beach house or something? Yeah, something about how his dad's beach house, his, his dad's vacation home was open for the week, or for the weekend. And so, he goes back to the table, mentions it to his friends, and his friends are like, yo, I'm down, I'll hang out at the beach house, let's do it! Mm hmm while they're at the beach house, of course, stuff goes bad. Mm -hmm. We find out the dad is angry about what happened years ago, and he waited 15 years to get his revenge, yep. and he starts taking out all of Ed's friends, and he goes after Ed as well. And that is the basic uh, premise of The Mutilator. Now I want to get into our likes of the film. Um, for me personally, I love that it felt like, especially at the beginning, it felt like an 80s sitcom, like Full House, when they're all like riding in the car. Everywhere you look, everywhere's everywhere. a face. I don't know the song. <laughs> Somebody who needs you. <laughs> and um, I love, I love this. A lot of people have say, mercy. <laughs> a lot of people say this song at the beginning. Yo, don't you think a rock star could afford his own house? Yeah. What the fuck was up with Uncle Jesse? I don't know. He's living in the attic, and the guy's like number one record in Japan. Why was Joey? If every word I said would make you laugh, I talk forever. <laughs> I ask the skies what we had. Ooh, it's what about Joey living in the basement? <laughs> yeah, he had his own like woodchuck show too. Everybody's a fucking freeloader. It's creepy. <laughs> Everybody's freeloading off Danny Tanner, man. How rude! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, I love, yeah, I love that at the beginning. I, I love that song at the beginning. We're going on a, on a, a fall break, walking hand in hand in the moonlight. A fall, fall break, break, fall break, walking in the moonlight. I love that when the kids are headed to the condo in the beginning. Um, 
Yeah, they're literally drinking and driving too. You see them reach back to the cooler and they're like, yeah. Yeah, I guess there was no open container laws back then. Probably not, no. <laughs> <laughs> I really loved um, Ralph, the character of Ralph. He's really funny. Not yet, Tiger. In every scene he was in, I feel like we really needed him for the film because a lot of the acting was really like bad. Ralph was cool. Yeah. Ralph had some wicked chest hair. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like he like gives George Animal Steel a run for his money, that guy. <laughs> Ralph had some wild chest hair, man. He, he yeah, that was, was, was gnarly. I liked Ralph, too. He was funny. Yeah, he was really funny. Um, I really liked that. I love the um, the gore in the movie. It was really, like, effective, The gore, I feel the gore like. was very cool. Yeah, yeah. I loved that. Um, what about you? I would have to agree. Uh, I, I like certain characters in the movie. The gore was effective. I liked the uh, early 80s feel. Another thing I liked was the, the, definitely um, the variety of weapons that mm -hmm. the father used to get his revenge on his son. And, and, it, and his son's friends. So my dislikes for the film, um, one would have to be like the lack of dialogue in certain scenes. It just felt very like awkward and tense. Like, yeah. um. <laughs> the guy kills his mother and the dad just says nothing. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> that was really odd. That's another dislike for me was how, like at the beginning, like we mentioned earlier, how the, how the dad like uh, lifted his like wife's dead body. So it was leaning on him and acting like he was going to give her some of his drink. Like she could actually drink it. I thought it was very weird. Just like for me, um, probably it, it wasn't, it was pretty obvious the whole time who the killer was. I mean, we kind of knew right away mm -hmm. from like the opening scene where like, it wasn't like a big surprise. Like, oh, I think it's the dad. We knew right away it was the dad from like just his reaction from his wife dying. And then like when uh, the kids finally showed up at the condo and like the first scene of them showing up at the condo, he went on and on with, um, Ed went on and on with stories about his dad, <laughs> about how his dad accidentally killed one of his friends, but the fucking, fic the picture of his de dad's like dead friend is in a picture it frame. It was really weird. It was actually a picture of the director, Buddy Cooper. Yeah, it was Buddy Cooper. <laughs> He's like, oh, this was some, uh, what do you call some accident that happened. Yeah, he and got ran over by a speedboat or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, but he, he had it in a picture frame. There, yeah. was, there was also like a bullet on the wall in a frame, so. Yeah. And then, the, then there were like hooks hung up on the wall and you kind of knew that was going to be a weapon later on. Foreshadowing. Like, yeah, so like uh, right off the bat, we, I, I kind of knew. I was like, yeah, the, the dad's the killer. The dad's going to get his revenge. And I don't know what it, and I also don't know what it, why it took him 15 years to get his revenge. Yeah, why did he wait so long? Yeah, he's like, damn it, dad, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. <laughs> So that was like 15 years ago, man. <laughs> I, and I cleaned your fucking guns. What the fuck? <laughs> At least the guns were clean. Yeah. <laughs> Another dislike would have to be like the blind man's bluff scene, how it takes like forever. And it's <laughs> very, I don't know. I feel like it's very oddly placed in the film. Um, I agree. It's very awkward. <laughs> I always found it weird when people basically play hide and go seek when they're older, but they call it different things to mm -hmm. try to sound cool. Yeah. Remember like in high school, they're like, yo, tonight we're playing manhunt, dude. We're playing manhunt. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, manhunt. Um, what do you mean? They're like, well, first you hide, and then I come get you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you mean hide and go seek? They're like, no, no. It's manhunt, man. man. It's manhunt, yeah. No, no. It's blind man's bluff, dude. I'm like, dude, these fuckers are playing hide and go seek. Yeah. I would have to agree with you, too. I felt like there were certain scenes that, like, that there was lacking dialogue. There was also certain scenes that just took up a lot of like unnecessary time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, certain dialogue was weird too. I think uh, who's that blonde guy? And he said that the chlorine. Mike. Mike said the chlorine water is good for his herpes. Or something. it looks like it's been loaded down with chlorine. Will that hurt you? No, in fact, it probably prevents herpes. Uh, I was like, what the hell was that? But uh, <laughs> some of the dialogue's really weird. The acting's a little off, but uh. I like the kills. I like this, and I, and I like it as a slasher film. But mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's gonna watch this film for the acting, anyway. No. So, yeah. So I mean, expect some bad acting. Expect some corny dialogue. But expect to have some fun. So my favorite kill of the movie would have to be the end where um, the killer, aka Ed Senior, um, gets cut in half. Um, I think that's a really awesome. Um, ending oh yeah. And a really cool kill. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, yeah, like the half the, the half man comes back to life. Mm -hmm. to, yeah. And I would, he, like, cuts that, the cop's that, leg off. That yeah. was cool. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite kill? Mm -hmm. Let me think. Definitely most brutal kill of the movie, I would have to say, was when I think her name, her name is Sue. Sue. Mm -hmm. Sue gets the fuck, Sue gets, like, a hook up, like, through her crotch, and it pops out her belly, and, yeah, it's pretty brutal to watch. Uh, there's also another kill where um, he, uh, 
Ed's dad takes out the uh, the beach cop, mm -hmm. chops off his head. It's a really cool decapitation scene. I think that's pretty cool. Um, the blonde guy, what's his name? Mike. The blonde guy, Mike, when uh, when he dies, he's actually like, he gets cut up and he's like spazzing out before he like falls. He's like, that's pretty, mm -hmm. it's pretty, that's pretty cool. So yeah. yeah, they got some really neat kills in this film. Yeah, no, I agree. What would you give it out of 10? Out of 10? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, our last video with the burning, I gave it a seven. I think this holds up pretty pretty much even with the burning. I would because for some reason the burning and the mutilator always go together for me. I agree. I always watch those mm -hmm. two films together. I think I I actually picked up those films the same day. I used to have bootlegs of these films, and I got them the same day. And then I, I was so happy to see them actually release on Blu-ray because mm -hmm. the transfers are very nice now. So pick up these films, check them out. Um, yeah, so I gave the burning a seven. I'm gonna have to give this one a seven too. I think it's a solid seven, as far as a slasher film goes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, I agree. Mine would my score would be a seven out of ten as well. Um, I gave the burning an eight out of ten just because I enjoy the burning um, a little bit more than I enjoy the mutilator, but the mutilator Me is too. still fun. I think it's still a solid seven out of ten. Um, it's a fun movie to put on on a Friday or Saturday night. You're hanging out, having a couple drinks, hanging with your friends. Playing like, some Blind Man's Bluff. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's all around. If you just want to have a good time, this is a good movie to put on just to have some fun. So our final thoughts on this film is definitely check it out if you're into fun 80s slashers with uh, bad dialogue and bad acting. <laughs> yeah, expect the cheesy acting. Ex mm -hmm. black, expect like the plot to be thrown together kind of sloppy. But expect to have a good time, expect to have fun, expect to see like a good 80 slasher. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching our review. And as always, I'm Kaylee Kaylin Har and I'm Robbie Rob James. Please hit that like and subscribe button down below if you like what you see. Uh, drop us a comment. We enjoy all of your positive feedback. That's right. And <laughs> if you don't have any nice to say, just don't say nothing. Yeah, true. Just go on a fall break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going on a, <laughs> a fall, fall break, break, fall break, walking in the moonlight. Oh. Until next time.